one. This is what I call my prison. This is West Seventy Fourth Street, the, uh, in Central Park West. On this corner, on my left, is the San Remo. On my right is Longhorn or something like that. Uh, Langham, and uh, the San Remo. There it is, right in front of it, is home to many stars, including Dustin Hoffman and Demi Moore, Ashton Kutcher, of course, and all the idiot kids. And um, Steve Martin. Anyway, these guys won't. Here's the truck. Yeah, you know, just sh kind of shows up whenever I come near Central Park. They're using these guys to spy on people. I went jogging yesterday. There was about 20 of these guys, plus about six police. Don't have a criminal record. Never broke the law ever in my life. But anyway, about seven years ago, every time I went jogging, the police would show up and. Uh, walk into a store, police would show up, you know, I was waiting online to check out, police would show up. Uh, and these guys, these doormen, they used to have a button on their um, walkie-talkies where they just press a button and the police come. They don't have to show cause, which is, you know, against the law, of course. They also break the law by uh, the only people n in New York that can discriminate on housing. They call it a co-op, but it's basically uh, housing. See, they just call the police and the fire department now come. So every time I leave my house, there's a fire truck, there's a police truck. I've been out here about three or four minutes, and I guarantee you there's no emergency. I've checked these guys out, you know, whenever I come out, I follow them in my car, whatever. These guys followed me. My car broke down yesterday. The fo police followed me all day long. Then the fire trucks followed me with the tow truck. Okay. This is the front of, of the school across the street from my house. Uh, so the neighbor in my house is this Rod Stewart impersonator. There's a San Remo on the corner. And I was singing a song from Saturday Night Live uh, that I was going to kill everybody with a shotgun or something like that. Um, and he went around to all the buildings. This guy, when I moved in, my mother bought this building. I moved in. I'm the owner's son, so of course, you know, why does he get to live for free? Anyway, this guy would just break things, really just try to cause a... A month after he moved in, he turned into the Nightmare on Elm Street, just cursed at my mother, yelled at her, harassed her, broke things, trying to create like a rent strike, you know, thing, maybe take over the building, this stuff has happened. He got all these... There's a sandry mug again. He got all these people. So this guy really started problems for me. And of course, he's very popular because he's a Rod Stewart impersonator. Everybody wants to hang out with him because he gets invited places. But the guy is, like Pacific Heights, nasty. I mean, same MO, right down to the... I mean, he didn't put bugs in the house, but... It just And he knows everybody in the neighborhood. He talks to all the doormen. So he spread this room around year 2000. I was going to get a shock, and I was going to kill everybody. And around year 2000, you know, these kids are coming to school with guns. And these are all schools over here with guns and shooting people. Now, he wasn't using his judgment. He was just looking for any way to harass my, my family, my mother. Anyway, getting back to the San Remo. Um, so that happened in 2000. The police uh, just, just showed up. But now it's every day. I mean, I used to be able to go out and go about my business and see police, except maybe Central Park when the doorman decided to hassle me. But anyway, it's Association for Better New York. They got rid of that button thing. They're the ones that started it when there was a high crime in the 70s. But they got rid of it, and I complained, and of course they never gave me an official reason. But this is Lenny's pool. This is where the cops hang out. All the cops want to hang out here. They want to meet the pretty girls who live in this area. They want to make friends with the rich people, maybe get a job when they graduate and when they retire, I mean. And uh, these guys were nasty. You know, some of the same people that work in the San Remo, his name was Healy or something, he was the manage the building. He would badmouth me to all the employees. Employees would come in here. They would tell the guys that I wanted to get a shotgun to kill everybody. Um, and these guys were really nasty guys. Uh, so they kind of started banning me from there. They kind of tr mistreating me. And uh, and everybody in this neighborhood, like all the women are looking for rich guys. They all gossip about everybody. They have to know who everybody is, where how much money they make, where they live, so on and so forth. 
And if you're not wealthy, there you know you're just pretty much persona non grata, on you know, especially on the women. Um, it's basically like any rich neighborhood. Like you know, you hear stories of Beverly Hills where the cops pull people over for no reason, they hassle them. They don't really do it that much here, but they do do it. I mean, they started doing it. And any time rich person calls, they just show up. I remember one time the door was open. And this, you know, this pretty lady, I mean, they don't know, I guess she, you know, she said, oh, there's a door open in my building, I don't know what's going on, the police all showed up. But anyway, this is just to explain why, there's a San Remo, it's the two towers, um, why, uh, you know, I have this other video with police cars, and it's, um, police cars following me, and I have 50 in one day, driving, like, round trip 15, 20 miles, and this is where it started. You know, these people who've been like harassing me for years. Uh, this other guy spread this rumor that uh, I had something on my s video screen, you know, something that, uh, anyway, that I was an anti Semite. I mean, even if I want, or that I was a Nazi, I couldn't even be a Nazi if I wanted to. I mean, it's so ridiculous it is, but, uh, the, you know, the people next door, they spread all these. R these people are just rumor mongers. And there's. This is really where the ambulance show up now all the time. They're oh, and Lenox Hill is like 40, I don't know, 30 blocks away. It's on the east side. It's not even right side of Park. It's just really weird. I mean, you wouldn't find St. Luke's ambulance. But anyways, ambulance everywhere now. And it, it wasn't like this a few years ago. These are all the first responders. Uh, it's the fire truck you just saw. I guarantee you this guy wasn't here like 10 minutes ago. But uh, guy in my building or across the street, I don't know, but you saw that fire truck show up like three minutes later, somebody uh, called him, and that's every day. So this is just to explain where all this came from, the police following me in the cars. I just went into the store here. I brought my camera because these guys have been following me for about seven years. I don't know what. I was like acting nervous one time, and after that, they follow me all the time. Now they, I mean, I'm a pretty old guy. You know, I don't I wear shorts and t shirt, and they still follow me. I mean, uh, they really have no reason. They just hassle me. The people come in, and the w they say, oh, there's that terrible man, and whatever, you know. And, uh, just to be jerks, I mean, it's just rich degenerates. You know, nothing, you know, you know, these people are all private club mentality, Ivy League. You know, keep everybody out except the top one percent. You know, and they want to turn everything around here into, you know, Ivy League uh, uh, private, you know, country club. Just like their apartments are basically country clubs. You know, the San Remo is, is so the supermarket's got to be a country club too. You know, and you got to be admitted to it, and you. And that's how co-ops work. You have to be admitted. Uh, you have to go to the right schools. You have to have the right family connections and so on. And I guess pretty kids, because, I mean, they all, I think they pass their kids around, their teenage kids, uh, for sex. I don't know. They're into all kinds of weird things. And that's probably the main reason that they're, that they're in what they do, what they do, because they want to hide. But anyway, that's, that's the... But anyway, this place, every time I come in, now the owners, they stand behind me when I buy food. Real pricks. I mean, and then they have everybody here's African who works in here. I mean, it's such, and all the owners are white. There's such a, there's just no labor laws here. It's really ridiculous. I mean, these guys, and the owner of the store, he owns a whole building. The guy is rich. He could do whatever he wants. He just does this for fun, and he still can't pay decent wages and have, uh, you know, middle class people working here. He just wants, like, the lowest of the low. I mean, immigrant Africans. I mean, these people are so desperate. But, uh, so I have these immigrant Africans who are, like, follow me in the supermarket, hassle me in the store, laugh at me, and then, you know, a lot of them go back down the street and in some nice girl's apartment, you know, pretty blonde, and they have their fun. But anyway, this is in front of my building, and, uh, the guy next door, you know, he hired this impersonator, this, uh, Rod Stewart impersonator, to do the maintenance, because the guy doesn't, he's got, can't work or something, I don't know. And he knew what that this guy was harassing my mother. His wife is uh, uh, a psychologist. They're, they go to a Hebrew thing every week, both the kids. And but, you know, they want the building, so they hassle 
they knew that this was good, you know, hassle the old lady, she's by herself there. Maybe she'll sell, maybe she'll move out. 